Uh, Come Out and Play was actually the last song we wrote for Smash. We had the whole thing pretty much written. We were uh, just off of, off of Ignition, which had been out for like a year, and had started off only selling a few copies. Actually, we were stoked that it sold 10,000 copies, and it had got up in about a year and a half to almost 50,000, and we thought that was pretty unbelievable. Uh, so we had all these songs ready for Smash, and we were pretty excited about getting there to do it. And felt like things were kind of rolling, like going up and stuff. And uh, Come Out and Play was the last thing that, that I came up with. You know, we were also really into kind of the Middle Eastern stuff at that time. Right. Well, actually, I've kind of been into it on and off ever since. You know, I mean, it's been, uh, it's, it's not so much just Middle Eastern. It's also like surf stuff, you know, Dick Dale and the Ventures, as well as like guys like Ravi Shankar and stuff like that. It's kind of a cool sound. You know, we did it even on Ignition, songs like Take It Like a Man. Kind of had that kind of vibe going on. I just kind of made up that riff one day, just kind of messing around, just doing the... And it just kind of happened to be in the same key as that other riff I was working on, and thought, well, I wonder, let's see how these two train wrecks go together. And it just kind of seemed to work. We had to mix around the chords a little bit. So it's got the Middle Eastern thing in it. It's got kind of this Vato Punk kind of... Yeah. Groove to it as well, and then we we're still left with the problem of what to do when that thing stopped. The, you know, what do you do then and stuff. And uh, this is actually the story. Swear to God, true story. I was uh, I was working in a lab at the time. I was a graduate student because I wanted to avoid the real world. But I swear to God, my job was to grow bacteria to infect with viruses. And so to grow bacteria, you have to make up petri dishes, and you have to grow all this broth. So I made up like a gallon of this stuff, this gunk, and I put it in these two flasks because it wouldn't fit in one because I had to pour like a hundred Petri dishes. I want to have enough to last me all week. <laughs> <laughs> so you put them in there, but then you got to sterilize it. So you put it in this big pressurized oven called an autoclave. And these things are very, very hot. So you put it under this place called the hood and it's like a, like a hood on a, on a stove top or whatever. It cools them off and stuff. And I went back like 10 minutes later, and it's still friggin' hot as hell, you know? And, uh, and it's still hot later and later. I'm going back half an hour later, and I look at them. They're next to each other, and I go, these things are never going to cool down. i got to keep them separated. And so I pulled them apart, and then I start light bulb went off. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you don't believe me, huh? No, that's, I totally believe you. I'm just thinking <laughs> that's a long way to go to get to that part of the story. <laughs> <I know. laughs> 